User joined your channel. Coming in. You know what that means. It's my favorite hour of the week. Hey, everybody. It's Maria from What's the Story with Maria. How's it going? So welcome to our show. Today is March 26th. It's a Tuesday. Uh, Edie Gershman has joined us. You know, the, for our radio listeners, if you're listening to on armeddigitalmedia.com or Armed Radio Global, a shout out to our vets across the country and the world. We love and appreciate you. Thank you for your service. Um, and so I just want to welcome everybody on. Annette Zito has joined us. If you hear me calling people out, we're also Facebook Live and radio people. So that's why I'm seeing people come on our Facebook. Mark Weiser has joined us. Hi, Mark Weiser. Joe Savino, he's the big cheese. He's Joe Rocks at um, Armed Radio. Hi, Joe Rocks. George uh, Hernandez has joined us. From, he's in Miami. So thank you, George Hernandez. Thank you so far, everyone that's popped on. And you'll see we have a lot more people that pop on as the show goes on. So I was talking to Jimmy tonight, and uh, usually Jimmy and I are producer and engineer. We talk about, um, you know, what we're going to call the show. So I give him the guest names, and then um, I, uh, he says, what are we going to call it? And so tonight we are uh, calling it um, Celebrating Southern Style. So anybody that knows me knows that when I do these shows, I usually put people together for a reason, something that they have in common or something that – I feel about both of them. Now, Tara is just this incredible singer that I heard a, a little while back at the club that I work at downtown. And, oh, my God. I, You know, look, I hear a lot of singers. That's what I do. I work in nightclubs, and I'm a musician, and I'm a singer, so I hear a lot of singers. But I just stopped what I was doing when you came in. John Bronson, who is a mutual friend, actually, of three of us. Yay! Yes, I thought of that, that too. So that's that. another reason I put us oh. together. John Bronson uh, said, you have to hear Tara. Amazing. And then I was watching your, a couple of your YouTube videos um, recently, and I you mentioned being from the South. And I was like, okay, when I think of the South, I think of Randy, because Randy is a chef an amazing chef, and he owns this restaurant that I just adore called Spoon Fed NYC, and it's Southern Cooking. So that is why I have put these beautiful people together tonight. Let me see who else has joined us. Stephen Elbell, Kenny Green. Hey, You Kenny. know Kenny Green? You know <laughs> Kenny Green? He's an amazing musical director. And I think he's doing – are you doing – it must be Aben now? No, he's doing something else. But I know, Terry, you're going out – for Ain't Misbehaving in May, right? In the April, yes. Okay, all right. So we got a lot to talk about. Chocolatina Q Dessert uh, in Colorado has joined us. Kia Nelson in Philly. Hi, Kia. Miss you. Annette Zito, she's up in the Bronx. She's a chef, too. You're going to you're gonna love Randy, Annette. Okay, um, so all our regulars. Ed Kutu, he's at Blade Salon in uh, Rocky Hill, Connecticut. So he's a hairdresser. We went to high school Ooh. together. Yep, so if we need to get our hair did, we're going to go and see Eddie. Uh, David Foley Jr., he was on the show last week. He's an amazing singer. Uh, he's out with um, Les Mis right now. He just left. So he was on the show Tuesday and then went out on the road. I saw the so, show. You saw the show? Yeah. the show? Isn't it a great oh, show? so much fun. Yeah, Randy, and I'm so glad that you could do it tonight. And Bill Goffey. <laughs> Bill Goppy is in our studio audience. He's such a pain in my butt. Yeah, I had to calm him down. And Leo, Leo <laughs> is in our studio audience. He is my love. He's our accidental intern. Kyle de Blasio has joined us. Okay, now that I've done my opening, and I usually do a little bit of an opening because I want people to pop on, and I don't want them to miss any of what our guests have to say. So... This handsome devil, look at that smile, could you die? Mm -hmm. Is right? Uh -oh. Is Randy, she's getting all cute now. Randy Witherspoon, he is a chef and he now owns a restaurant called Spoon Fed. Uh, Maria Filiumania has joined us and ba Brad Street Brown has joined us. And uh, let's start with Randy and then we're going to go back and forth with Tara, Tara Connor Jones. Okay, so Randy, my love. Now, uh, I got to tell you, I, you know, I cook for our show, and today I was a little nervous. I don't usually get nervous about cooking, but I said, this is no joke. I have, a, like, a major chef on. It and smells I, amazing in here. You yeah. said that, so yeah, you made my day. Yeah, it smells really good in I, here. I, I, I really, can't wait to taste it. I did not make uh, – I don't cook southern dishes. I, I mean, I could learn, I guess, but maybe I'll hang out with you one day in the kitchen. Love that. You know, your meatloaf, I had – 
first of all, we'll talk about where Randy's restaurant is in a minute. I love meatloaf. I'm a lover of meatloaf. I don't make it really. I think I, I made it once, but it's not something I make, but I love it. Your meatloaf was the best I ever had. Thank you. The best in my life. I don't know if you need to get out more. Or no, <laughs> no. I split it. Now, Leo Rodriguez and I. Leo Rodriguez. <laughs> we have to say it that way every time. Leo Rodriguez and I are both people that enjoy food. We are not shy about eating. We ordered that meatloaf and we split it. We meatloaf ordered other is thing. a pound. It is okay. So talk ounce. about that meatloaf. It wow. is a sixteen ounce block of meatloaf. <laughs> block? It is a block. It is. It's, 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 it's a block. Now first, I'm going to the backstory of the meatloaf. Block. Whatever you want, it doesn't so, matter. So as I'm developing the recipes for the restaurant and for my friends and across Broadway, my husband, his mother left him her recipe book. Oh. And I'm going through it. Is your husband from the south as well? He's from Southern California. Oh. He thinks that. He qualifies him as being a southerner. <laughs> okay. But uh, I say yes because I have to. Oh, yes. Yeah, sometimes you do. Absolutely. So so his mother left him her, her, her recipe book, and I'm going through it, and I came across the meatloaf recipe, and I love the ingredients, and I thought it was very comparable to how I cook. And he told me the story that he and his siblings wouldn't eat her leftovers. They just didn't like leftovers. Oh, my so God. She would try to dis- leftovers. So she would disguise her, her leftovers daily. So one of her incarnations of the meatloaf, was to do a, a thin slice and fry it. And so when he told me that, I, was like, I love that it. concept. Yeah. So I I bumped it up. I said, what if we did a block, a 16 ounce block of meatloaf, wrap it in bacon. Oh my God. Roll it in my yeah, special. You listen to this? Roll it in my special seasoned flour. You like, just back up. Block of meatloaf, wrap in bacon. And then we roll it in flour. Roll it in flour. And then we deep fry that sucker. Are you kidding me? <laughs> exactly. Deep fry that sucker. And then when we get it out, it's a beautiful golden, crispy meat flock wrapped in bacon. Uh, exactly. And then, and then I have a candy tomato jam that I top on, on, over it. It is as if you needed it's anything flavor else. Flavor on top but of it's flavor perfect. on top of flavor. It's, that's how I like to cook too. Yeah. It, people are like, what the hell are you putting on there now? What do you need that for? Wait, it's perfect. Leave it. I'm like, no, there's one more thing. There's always room for one more thing when you cook. More is more. More. Thank you. More Absolutely. And there's a movie that that line is from too, where someone says less is more and and, uh, and somebody says no, more is more. And that's it. So now let me just, we got so many people that popped on. I really want to acknowledge them. Uh, so if you don't see Leo Rodriguez out there tonight, girls, because I know the girls go crazy for Leo, he is in the studio audience, and I have a, like limited Wi-Fi for some reason. There he, there is. he is. Thank oh. you, Leo. Pop back on. He's so cute. Everybody, that's Leo. There he is. He's so cute. Our accidental intern. So Kyle De Blasio, he's popped on. Kyle was with us that night when we had your unbelievable meatloaf, and he was talking about it too. Also, the sausage. Uh, Gravy. Gravy and biscuits. Uh, what the oh hell? God. Yes, everybody. So four, four I, different sausages make up that sausage gravy. Oh, tell us, okay. So you want to talk about that dish? There is a family-owned butcher a few blocks from the restaurant, Esposito and Sons. Italian, mm-hmm. right? Love them. Love it. Love them. Yep. They're several generations. Mm-hmm. And I go there and I pick out four different sausages. Amazing. And when we get back to the restaurant, we we um, take it out of its, out of casing. its casing and ground it some oh. more, mix it up really well. That is yeah. incredible. Yeah. You cook the way I cook. I just with like love. to you cook with yes, love. but I also like to deconstruct and reconstruct Absolutely. things. I'm all about that. Absolutely, I love that. That's fantastic. Okay, let's see. Dominic Victor has joined us. Hi, Dominic. Are you still in Texas? Dominic works at Mass Hall. He's an amazing bartender and singer and dancer, and I think he's in Texas right now. Isabella Raskowski is my cousin Marisa. She is uh, um, incognito under her uh, daughter's Facebook page, mm. so <laughs> we're not supposed to know it's her, but. Marisa, she joins every week. Hi, sweetheart. As a matter of fact, Marisa, when you come back to visit, uh, we'll go see Randy. We'll go to Randy's oh, restaurant. It'd be uh, great to meet her. Oh, you'll love my cousin Marisa. She's amazing. Um, okay, let me see. George, uh, Je- uh, Jessica Schaefer has joined us. Hi, Jessica. Jessica's getting married soon. We'd like to congratulate her out in Buffalo. Julie Garnier. Julie, are you in L.A. right now, or are you back in – I know she's, uh, she's traveling with the show right now, so pop that on. Suzanne Mason. Uh, Maria Filiomeni saw you last night. Jill Anderson, love you girls. They are amazing. Okay, so these are all people that come into the city 
and would a lot of them go see Broadway shows. Now you are smack in the middle. Give give, give uh, the radio listeners and your Facebook listeners your address. Three three one West Fifty First Street between Eighth and Ninth, a block from Wicked the Musical. A block from Wicked. So this is a perfect place to go before or after the show or in between shows, like a Wednesday. I'm sure you're really busy on between shows, right? Come anyway. Come we'll, anyway. We'll, we will find room and make a table. The night that I like, my favorite night to go to your restaurant is Friday because Bill Goffey, our mutual friend and big pain in the butt, but he is <laughs> he is our mutual friend and he's very talented as, you know, these temperamental artists can be. You know, I'm te- <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of very talented, come by on a Friday when Maria's there because she sings. Maria sings. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm yeah, all right. I, love but, uh, I like to go when uh, Friday nights when Billy's there. He plays from 9 to 12. And Leo is there a lot of times. And I like to go lots of times. Kyle joined us a lot. So let's make a thing of it. Let's make a thing of it. If Friday nights, if you're done with your show or you're on the way to show or you're not going to the show at all but you want something fun to do, you can have dinner. Enjoy wonderful music and just have fun. And Randy's there. He's he cooking. He's walking around. He's in, he will hug you. Randy is a great he, hugger. We hug, especially yeah. after you had the meatloaf. Yes, yeah. I hugged. I got a hug before and after the meatloaf. Can resist. Yeah, I love you. I love you too. He's Thank so you. beautiful, isn't he beautiful? Oh, oh my God, I love him. Tara, you must come into this love circle. So I'm here. I know. <laughs> now I got to tell you, I was watching you were Facebook living this a uh, couple of days ago. You were walking around. You would just come from church. You yeah. were walking around in the sunshine, uh, brightening up Harlem. I, 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 I'm assuming you live in Harlem. Right? I do. Yes. Okay, and I love. I love. I have a special love for Harlem because I manage a, uh, a bar called Mess Hall there on the weekends. So I, I love it. I love it. Now you're not from Harlem, though. You are a Southern girl. I Tell am me. a southern girl from Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida. Duval! <laughs> What's that? That's the county, and it's the chant of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Did you know about this, Randy? No. I had no clue. Oh, I love that. So that's uh, the Jacksonville uh, chant. Everybody yeah. should be doing this at home. You should be practicing that. Yeah, everyone knows it. Everyone knows it. All right, so you were born and raised there? Born and raised in Jacksonville. Okay. And uh, at, uh, do you have a big family, small family? Are you an only child? Or? I am an only child. Okay. Uh, so pretty small family. I have cousins, aunts, and uncles still there. All right. All in Jacksonville. Um, all doing in that Jacksonville. chant. Doing on the chant. Game day. Absolutely. On game day, the entire city I love, does Listen, I, I love football, so you're talking so about right. Oh, my God, I love that wasn't, that wasn't golf? No. Oh. That's another part of Florida we don't want to talk about. But that's where the golfers go. But anyway, now, uh, singing. You, I'm assuming that you started singing in church because I've heard you talk about that. Is I, that true? Yeah, I started singing in church. As a young girl? Not... Or did you start singing in school and then bring that to church? I'll put it this way. Yep. Growing up in the South, you did what your parents and grandparents told you to do, mm-hmm. and that meant you were going to do something in church. Mm-hmm. And so the choir was the easiest thing to me to do, so I was a part of what we called the Sunshine Band. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I just sang and played around and ate candy and did whatever. <laughs> until... I love the ate candy part because yeah. I'm, I'm in on that. I will, I will eat candy anytime. And my church got a new pastor who was who is a singer. Oh wow! And he heard me one day do something that I clearly didn't know I had done, and asked me to do a solo. Oh wow! And it was, How old do you remember? Oh my god! Maybe nine, mm. ten. I'm telling you, this mm. is. I'm going to stop you. I'll tell you why because I had a. Uh, this is so important, you know, because I teach kids too, and we all like have kids in our lives, and. You know, and we touch kids, you know, we sing for them. They sing with us. I was nine when I was in Catholic school when a, a, a priest heard me sing, just like with a bunch of friends, and said, I want you to come to folk group this Sunday and stay afterwards. And that's how I didn't even know. I just like was fooling around and having fun. And that's how I got connected with this amazing community. Uh, so I, when you tell that and you say nine, that's why I asked you how old you are. It changed my entire life. Yeah. My entire life. So you started singing. You had a solo. That's pretty impressive at nine. I did. I Do you sang. remember what the solo was? Give me a clean heart. That was the solo. Did you have chills? I just heart. got chills. I love her <laughs> voice. Me. 
uh, voice. So yeah, that was my song, and my mother saved the cassette. See, I know, I know. I have cassettes too. I, I, I won't years. give years. Yep. Yeah. All right, great. Now, uh, Randy, I want to switch back to you first because Tara is this like she's a, 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 a she's travels. She does a million shows and stuff. So she is the caliber of the people that I see on you. Because when I look at your Facebook page and your uh, your restaurant, the people that come to your restaurant are of this caliber, like top notch singers perform. Caliber. Yeah, you are of that caliber, Miss Thing. And um, everywhere I look, I'm like some famous person loves uh, your restaurant. So you, of course, are a chef and owner, but you also know these people because what was your career before this? I. I still consider myself a dresser on Broadway, even okay. though. It's and tell been people two years. what that means if they don't know what so that means. So wardrobe maintenance and and taking care of all of the quick changes as it contains to the show and to the the actors getting on. So we have 13, 10 second changes all the way to three five minute changes. Um, so all of the costumes are rigged. So during the day, there are hours allotted for doing all the repairs and rigging, so we can get them in and out of these costumes in a lot of amount of time. And how many years did you do that? I've for? been doing that for close to 25, 27 years. Wow. One of, I didn't know that world existed coming to New York. I'm from a small <laughs> town in South Carolina, and theater to me meant going to the movies. Okay, and all can, right. And we have one movie theater, you know, um, in our town. And uh, so when I found out about this world and I was asked to be a part of it, I felt a connection immediately. And I asked, I asked, my then supervisor would he mentor me so I can stay in this career. Wow. And he did. And but what I also did consistently throughout those years was cook and feed everyone on these shows. While you were there. While I was there. This is really you know, it's John Bronson, who is a mutual friend of ours who I absolutely adore, he's a musical director and he said that that's one of the things that he does when he goes out on tour is he always cooks for the cast. He does. Right? Mm -hmm. So you know. Yeah. And he's an amazing cook and uh and I, I always think like that's such a great person to have around because, and also Kenny Green told this great story about when he was on tour with, um, I forget what show it was, but Gladys Knight was on the, sh was on the tour with them. Uh, maybe Smokey Joe's, maybe it was Smokey Joe's. And Gladys Knight insisted that every Sunday, the whole cast sit down and have Sunday dinner together. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? That's yeah. beautiful. And she insisted and you could not, Kenny said you could not, disrespect Miss Gladys <laughs> by not sure. being there. Mm -hmm. And all she wanted was for everybody to sit down and eat together and then you could go and do whatever you need to do. But I think it's so important, you know, that person that has that heart that that would do that, like the John Bronsons of the world, the Randy Witherspoons of the world, those are very important people. They're the glue that keep mm -hmm. communities together. So I want to thank you for that. Oh. Yeah. And uh, let me, let's just keep checking because people keep coming on. They sometimes have questions. Jay Rivera has joined us. Michael Vaccaro. Hi, Michael Vaccaro. Hey, Michael. Now, I realize that there are two Michael Vaccaros that I know. One is in Massachusetts and one is in L.A. So let me know which one you are. They're both uh, wonderful people, uh, but they have two very different lives. So sometimes I think I'm talking to one and I'm not. Okay, um, so Isabella Rascosi, I wouldn't mind a Randy hug. Aww. Oh, my God. So that's my cousin Marisa. Marisa, when you come back to visit, which I'm hoping to get them here around Christmas time, maybe before, we're going to go see Randy, and you will get a hug, and you will not be the same. I'm just going to tell you right then and there. Um, Richard uh, Sates has joined us. John Bronson, we were just talking about you. Hey, John. You have the absolute best folks on your show tonight. I know, baby. And uh, one of the things that I said that they had in common was you, the big, the top hey, of, of the hour. Isn't he the loveliest person? Well, he is. He made a gigantic cake for one of my parties that was, it literally was this tall. It was called a, a, a cupcake, no, a, what was it, a peanut butter? It was Reese's, Reese's peanut butter cup wow. cake. Wow. It was in for three layers. Uh, yes, please. L yes. Liliana DeRamio Silva has joined us. Jeffrey Campbell, my sweet friend, has joined us. Billy Goffey, of course, there he is. Ben Goldberg, Bill Young, Michael Bow. Oh, my goodness, so many nice people are out there. We thank you. So, again, we're talking to Randy Witherspoon, the owner and chef at Spoon Fed NYC, which is on 51st between uh, 9th, 8th and 9th? 8th and 9th. 
Yes. Okay. Now, Tara, you, uh, I was trying to get you on the show for a while, but you're, you're out there a lot. You are traveling a lot. And then you text me, you are an A student, by the way, <clears throat> because the Thanks. second she got back into town, she texted me and said, I am available. Mm. These, you know, she gave me the, so you are, what were you doing then when, when you were unavailable and you came into town and you, I know you're going out of town again. So tell us your itinerary, my friend. I think what I was doing then was Chicago at the Fulton. Where's the Fulton? In Lancaster or Lancaster. Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania. That's a beautiful, beautiful community. That's a beautiful community and a lovely theater. I had a blast. All right. And and what were you doing out there? Chicago. Chicago. Who did you play? Mama Morton. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best role in the show. Mama uh, Morton. Oh, my God. You know that one, Billy? Uh-huh. Oh boy, hey, okay. we oh, might have to do that. We might take a quick break like in the next couple of minutes and just go to that. As a matter of fact, Billy, would you be prepared to play that now? No. No? <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, he's going to look it up. All right. Well, we might have to We might have to do that. Mama Morton, I love that. That's um, my favorite role in the show. It is a great role. I had a ton of fun doing it. Um, and I'm sort of like a sex vixen or something. Oh, yeah. Why not? Yeah. yeah. I was living what? life. I've come like, to one of your bustiers. You come through. Oh, my God. There's another thing they have in common. <laughs> bustiers. <laughs> and I had to wear a, a bustier in Tony and Tina's wedding. Bustiers for everybody. Yay! Everybody gets a bustier. You get a bustier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Billy's wearing one right now. <laughs> That's all Billy's wearing right now. <laughs> That's it. Oh, <laughs> That's his thing. You, Danny, a message you. Oh. Hi, honey. How are you? Dr. Janet Jeffs has joined us. Mandar Chick Magnet has joined us. Mandar, right? Leo is in the studio audience, so he will. I, I ask people to just be careful with the Wi Fi tonight. I got to get more Wi Fi. I know you're in charge of recipes. Can you wear one tonight? Judy has asked me, I don't know. You know what? I might have to do that. Mm. Just throw one on. Judy's my girlfriend. Um, okay, so you have, do you have one available? Uh, I don't know where you would get one on the way now from here in New Jersey. Brian Johnson has joined us from Massachusetts. Oh, it, it's it's happened that way because you're in the audience, Billy. Okay, so now you were doing Mama Morton, and yes. you're back in town for what a month, month, month and a half. And where are you going up to do now? I'm going home, 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 Jacksonville, Florida, and I'm Ooh. so excited. Okay, I haven't been on the stage in Jacksonville in three years. Mm. Oh, and that's I'm a going long time. Back to do. The first show I ever did at age 16, two years ago. All right. A couple <laughs> years back. <laughs> Misbehaving. Yay. It yeah. is one of my favorite shows. When I was 16, I was Amelia because I was up and squeaky and stuff. Is that the the the, uh, the Glenn? Uh... Campbell? No, no. Who, who originated that role? Was that Nell Carter? Nell Carter was okay. uh, Nell. Okay. She played Nell. And then right. the squeak. The squeak. Um, Armelia was the gold of the day. Right, right, right. right. That's a great show. Yes. Yeah, a great show. Is John uh, directing that or musically directing that? No, no, he's not. But that's how you folks met, right? John and I met for the first time. I went to the villages outside of Orlando. Okay, I have a, a friend that lives there, actually. Audition for Urban Street, and John, I think, played. And then we met again at West Coast Black Theater Troop in Sarasota years, years later, and kept trying to figure out how we knew each other. Right. And he, we've been connected ever since. Unbelievable. Well, a lot of those musical directors and actors and actresses travel in, in circles, and sometimes you're just going to reconnect. Yeah. It's just going to happen like that. Um, okay, so you're going back to do Ain't Misbehaving. What are the dates on that theater? May 8th to June 9th. Okay. And can I say something more? You can say anything you want. We have plenty of time. We have plenty of time. Another reason I'm so excited about going home is many people don't know I taught for 19 years. I didn't know that. You see why I have to have people on the show? I Did you know that? No, no, I had no idea. Exactly. I taught first and fourth grade oh in Jacksonville. God. And I, I would do community theater on the side as much would as you, I Would they call you Miss Tara or Miss Jones? Miss Jones. Okay. And I go written by Miss Maria. Mm -hmm. 2014, I did my first professional show at the Alhambra, and that was The Color Purple. I was Sophia. And oh, my June God. Of, June You're of 2014, me. I resigned from teaching. That's it. And, like, took a leap of faith. And it, a friend asked me today, one of my mentors asked me today, 
So how many years has it been since you left teaching? And I was like, oh my God, five years. No. I can't even believe Did, it. Uh, let me ask you how that happened. Did you just say to yourself one day, I, I, I have to follow my dream of singing? Or was it just that you were burnt out from teaching? Or how did, because that, that kind of decision is a major decision. And how does one, and that's why I want to come back to you about changing careers after mm -hmm. that. So go ahead. I'll tell you quickly. In 2012, I was blessed to be present at my mother's last breath. And what I always tell people is that at the same moment, a light went off mm. and a light came on. Mm. And it was as if I could hear her saying, now live. Yeah. And that was 2012. I worked two more years just trying to get myself back together. In wow. 2013, the fall of 2013, my superstar big sister, Angela Robinson Whitehurst, sent me a text message and said, because she's from Jacksonville also, mm -hmm. she said, the Alhambra is doing the color purple. I'm going to email Todd, who's the artistic director, and tell him he has to hear you. And I only did the audition because I didn't want to disappoint her. Wow. I didn't even have the right sheet music. I went in singing, I am changing, and it was like two keys higher than I should sing it, but I was already there, so I screamed for my life and made it. <laughs> Wow. And the man who is my theater dad, I affectionately call him, hired me on the moment. And when he did, I kind of started seeing things come into motion. He hired me for the very next show and said to me, there's something special about you. And if there's anyone that should not be in a classroom, it's you. Wow. He says, I'm going to make sure. He says, you're going to work for it, but I'm going to offer you your equity card as a part of this. Next oh, country. my God. That's amazing. And I got back my card doing Shrek the Musical. I was dragging. Wow. I, was, I opened the show as Mama Ogre, green and everything. Then I ran off and took off a green face and became Mama Bear and took my Mama Ogre clothes off because I had my Mama Bear clothes on underneath. <laughs> right. And then I was dragging. Wow. So I worked hard. Yes. But it was, and, and even when I did The Color Purple, I was at work from 7.50 to almost 4 or 5 every day, and then I would go do the show at night. Wow. Um, but that's how it happened. I just felt, I, I can't explain no, it. You it's, can't. That, it's that inner sense that this is the time. You know this what else, and I mean, we didn't, we didn't prepare to talk about this, but I really, I was telling these guys that I like to stay very authentic when we do the show. And we, before the show, talked about our moms, because my mom also passed away. Uh, a couple years back, and you know what's amazing? I c could not agree with you more about about what happens when a, a parent. Some some people it's their dad, but there's something that happens when a parent is no longer there, where you just nothing matters anymore. It's the weirdest feeling. The the small stuff does not matter. Sure. There is just a switch. Like you, when you said a light went off and a light goes on, there is a change that happened. Like what I felt was. Like, you know when you're a little kid and somebody ties a balloon around your wrist so you won't lose it? So you're like, okay, it's not going to go anywhere. It's tied around. I felt literally like the balloon had been snipped. Mm. But then I felt like I was the balloon. I felt like mm. I had just, exactly. and my mother was, <laughs> you know. Jimmy, what's going on? Something closer to the mic. Okay. So the, the reason I bring the story up is because these incredible things that happened to us you know like i felt so disconnected from the thing that held me to earth you know which was this and moms are like so big in our lives yeah, so yeah. i could not agree with you more and i think it's very important to do what you're supposed to do and what your passion is and that's like we talk about this all the time on the show like to follow your passion and sometimes at first there's not the right money in it or it's it's hard to know if you're doing the right thing you know, or you're in a new city, you know, like you said, sometimes you're like, my family's not here. I don't know a lot of people here. What am I doing here? But you know, you're here for the right reason. I really love that story. And I appreciate that you told it. Thank you so much. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that can identify with that. Now, Randy, your life, um, you changed careers, your life changed directions. And how did that happen? Because you were doing it for 27 years. Absolutely. I love being on Broadway. As a dresser, I love the community. I love what I did. I took pride in, in I'm it. Sure and, you and, and I love defining myself as a dresser. Mm -hmm. right? And because I, as I said earlier, I, I cooked for everyone on every show I've been on. And this started, it started to take on its own life. And I was pulled aside 
and the uncle said, it was said to me, stop feeding us for free. We enjoy your food that much that we want to pay you for it. They, that's what they said? That's what they said. Wow. I had not, this was not part of a plan or a scheme or Someone a said business to you, plan. Was exactly. it a friend? It, was it, it, it no, a... It, was, it was an entire department wow. at Wicked. It was the hair department that pulled wow. me in and said, we want to talk to you. Wow. Yes. Um, um, so what we did was started to work on meals that they enjoyed that I've made. Okay. And we, we, we constructed a menu and then we came up with the name and they did it as a theater, as a family, as a community. Wow. And then I went forth out into the community <laughs> and I my business plan was now here's an envelope that says eat like you mean it, honey. Eat Put like anywhere from four to eight from four to eight dollars in, in the envelope. Pick your meal. I'll come back between shows and pick up the envelope and the leftover meals. And I'll also if you don't have the money, just eat. So that went on for five years, and I wow. loved it. I loved it, and there's so many stories attached with that. Oh, from, I can imagine. From Patty Lapone to to um, James Earl Jones, and it was James wow. Earl Jones at a party we were doing for his son at one of the shows he was in. Says, Randy, you should open up a restaurant. Wow, James Earl Jones. And he used, he used with his deep voice. Right, you hear him saying, yeah, "Yeah, me too." Yeah, you should hear my husband imitate him. Sounds nothing like him. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still, you should hear him do it. And, and 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 that next day, I started looking for a place. Wow. And I started the ball rolling, and here we are. Amazing. And how long have you been open now? Open two years. We got the space a year and a half prior to opening, and everything that could go wrong went wrong. And when it looked oh. like we were out of money, for paying for a Manhattan rental. Yes, I without, can't, without, can't even imagine. Without that any, 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 um, we weren't making any money because we weren't open. We were in construction, and then the con contractors left before we finished. The entire Broadway community came out. Wow. It was, it was I, I said, I'm not going to open, but thank you for your love and support. <laughs> and they, from the carpenters and to electricians and the dancers and the stage managers and the ushers wow. and the musicians, showed up without me asking and said, show, show us your list. Wow. And they spent the next two and a half to three months finishing that restaurant. Are you kidding me? And they raised money to help offset the late rent. Oh my that God, that's a beautiful and they, story. And they opened the restaurant. They said, we build sets every day for living. Wow. So That is a beautiful that's story. Community. That's the community. Yeah. That is a beautiful story. All right, I'm, I, I, I am very moved by that. And I want to go back to that in a minute. Now, I would like to take this time if it's okay with Bill and Tara, to Tara and Bill is a very last minute plan. Are going to do a song, um, and Randy, that story. Oh my God! So, um, folks, I want you to. We're going to turn you that way. And Bill and Tara are going to do a song together. I'm going to keep talking until they. When they were going to do originally, yep. Yeah. All right, so just hang in there. Or what was the first one you were gonna? You guys were planning on doing. All right, here we go. So this is from Chicago, the role she just finished doing. All right, it's all you and Billy. Take it. Ask any of the chickies in my pen. They'll tell you I'm the biggest mother in. I love them all, and all of them love me. Because the system works, the system called reciprocity. Great. 
glasses we're using because I was afraid the glasses oh would shatter. Oh Bill Goffey, I can't thank you enough oh for stepping God. up and doing oh that. Thank you. Wasn't that oh incredible? So Come on back. Come on that back. Oh my God. Whoa. You have sung for yourself a young lady, which is going to bring us straight into our next segment, which is called Gahad. Keep it. Thank you. Now you two have to do it with us. Ready? One, two, three. Go ahead. Keep eating. Okay, so, my God, thank you both. You First of all, Randy, that story was amazing, and I want to go back to it. So, I had Chef Randy Witherspoon on, so I had to step it up, as Randy always steps it up. Sa Tara said that she loves seafood, because I love seafood. She said, are you kidding me? I'm from Florida. Yep. So, what did I make? I made some mm. jumbo shrimp marinated in, um, I used white, I'm sorry, marsala wine garlic, capers, basil, a little unami, which I'm loving these days, instead of, a lot of people don't like the, the uh, mushroom texture, which I do, but a lot of people don't, so I use the mushroom flavoring, I use that, um, and onion, like uh, sauteed some onions, some cubel peppers, which are the green ones that you see, they have a little bit of a bite to them, and then some peas, which I love, and uh, made like a delicious, like a butter cream kind of sauce that's going to go on that. And the pasta is a uh, radiatore, 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 which means radiator, which I love. Radiatore tre colore. So Randy said that's going to be his new name. That's my new drag name. That's your drag new drag name, Radiatore. Randy Radiatore. It. I Randy say it radiatore yet, but I will. It's tough to say. Radiatore. It's like radiator. 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 They look like little radiators. So that is what. Plate. Thank you, sweetheart. I plate. I wanted to make it look pretty for you. So that's. But we have a ton of this. So this is just our display plate. Now, everybody knows I love a nice salad. So I continue with. Since we're doing this show is a southern theme show celebrating southern style. I am a southern Italian. So. We went with the Southern Italian. So that was that. And then I made a delicious salad, red leaf lettuce, with some delicious mozzarella, fresh mozzarella cut up, and these beautiful little tomatoes that I love. They're kind of like cherry tomatoes, but they're three different colors, staying with the tre colore again, and they each have different flavors. So I did that, and there's some ba fresh basil in there. We're just going to do a simple balsamic vinegar and extra virgin olive oil, and there's a little bit of garlic salt in there already. Right. That look good? Yeah. Real? It looks so good. Now, Randy uh, has great desserts at his restaurant. I love that banana pudding. I, Thank you. Oh, my God. It's like I, I could drink that. It's so good. So, um, But I said I'm not going to be a fool and try to – I don't bake anyway. Make dessert or buy something foolish that Randy could make a thousand times better. So I thought, what would Randy not make? Because it's a southern re restaurant. Boston cream pie. So here it is. You don't make that, right, Randy? No, I don't make All that. All right. So I got a nice Boston cream pie cake. We're going to be enjoying this, Yum. the four of us. 
Leo Rodriguez is going to help us eat this as well. Yes, I love that about you, Leo. And Billy Goffey, thank you so much for playing for Tara. Yeah, Tara! Oh, my God. Could you just... Did you just die? That was amazing, right? Okay. Oh, you were incredible. Yeah, that's that's what you guys just experienced. What I experienced the first time I heard it, and I was like, "What the hell is going on there?" So the olive oil is extra virgin after that. Oh well, there you go. Now we know about the salad too. So, um, all right. Now, Randy, that story that you told about the Broadway community coming together like that—I didn't know that at all. And I want you guys to. Remember that I would, I mean, Randy's restaurant, I feel like it is a home when you walk in. And um, now it's even more of a home. Also, the upstairs, um, Billy told me about it because I didn't know about the upstairs. So Billy's like, oh, you should see the upstairs. And everybody is so nice there. Like he said when he first started working there, you can't believe how nice these people are. That was, he kept saying it. So I want to put this out there. If you are having a party, like a you know party like how many can you fit up there randy oh, we we have two rooms it's like a floor through okay we can separate it with curtains and we also have a full bar upstairs and yep. in one of the bigger rooms we can see comfortably 45 and that room has a stage and and and, and audio video equipment and a piano and drum set Unbelievable. and then we have the bar and that can seat 10 to 15 in that area and then we have the back room which is the red room and that can seat 20 to 25. And okay. there's standing that allows for more. We can. And the little stage, I love it. It's a little stage mm -hmm. that's out there. So it's really good for like uh, any kind of party that you're having, but also like showers and things like that because there's a little bit of an elevated or uh, any kind of presentation. Maybe you're doing Absolutely. a presentation for work. Like lunchtime, too. You're open lunchtime, right? Open lunchtime. So let's say you work in the Broadway area and you need to do a presentation for your company. I thought of this the, as soon as I went in there. I thought this is a perfect place that's tucked away, and then you get a, a, an amazing meal while you're doing this presentation instead of in a stuffy office that nobody really wants to be in. You know, so please write it down. Uh, 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 spoonfednyc.com or go on at uh, on Facebook and look it up. Go and check out this place, especially we go on Friday nights when Billy's playing, and go and check out the space because you will not believe how cool it is and that you don't even know it's there so i want to keep checking with my uh my people see who's here um melissa driscoll has joined us now i saw gene simpson done you know melissa oh how cool missy's great and i saw gene simpson had popped on hi gene simpson she's in uh illinois lj temple has joined us dana joel nicholson he's my next door neighbor he's got <laughs> he's great and he's got amazing pipes too so dana is this incredible singer dana we got to get to see billy at spoon fed on a friday i tried to get him a few weeks ago but then i got called into brandy's what happens lots of times is on friday nights I, i'm on the sub list at brandy's as a singer and bartender so i work there and i don't know till the last minute james solomon ben has joined us uh charles chesler has joined us mandar uh is loving the loving all of this stuff he's clapping like crazy now i need to tell the regulars because Right. Uh, uh, Marisa said, wow, wow, wow. I know, Marisa. It's incredible, right? Uh, so, Rena Cunial, you notice, is not here tonight. She's one of our regulars. She's my cousin. Liz Goldenberg just joined, and she, I saw yes. her at, at Spoon Fed last time I was there. Rena is in the Dominican Republic. She is enjoying some sun and fun. She's there with her husband. They're on a little fun excursion. So, that's why she... Tara just made a <laughs> sexy noise there. Wow. <laughs> LaDonna Burns. Do you know LaDonna Burns? Hey, LaDonna. LaDonna, yeah. look who's LaDonna. here. Do you know LaDonna Burns? I don't know. LaDonna, you need to I'm know LaDonna. Randy. Randy Witherspoon is the owner and chef at Spoon Fed NYC. You, we got to all go together. He's an amazing chef. Oh, my God. LaDonna is incredible. I love LaDonna. She works at Brandy's. I was just talking about Brandy's. All right. So lots of stuff going on here. Now. Uh, let's a little bit talk about food. Tara, you said you you don't like to cook very much, right? Because yeah. you okay. I love to eat. <laughs> All right, good. Thank God for people like you, right? Because we like to cook, and you Absolutely. need people to eat it, right? Now, what uh, what growing up? What was your favorite meal? Something that made you instantly happy, even if it was like junk food. Two things. Okay, tell me. My mother doing mashed potatoes. Smothered pork chops with gravy, and we call them early June peas. What's that? What is that? I don't know that. Little green peas. Early June peas. In early June, so they call them early June. Oh, well, were they sweet? 
I don't know. They just worked well with all of that raving. <laughs> <laughs> good. You see and the difference rolls. between a cook and a non cook? Uh-huh. She's like, I don't know. And We're like, rolls. okay, soft and rolls. My grandmother, with butter. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. My grandmother would cook chicken and dumplings. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. I love chicken and dumplings, and no one cooks it in my family. My, it went away with my That family. really truly is a Southern thing. I have never had, uh, I mean, that's the only time that I've really had chicken. Do you make that? Yes, we do. You do? Mm-hmm. At the restaurant? Yeah, it's not on the menu. We had it on the menu as a special two weeks ago. Okay, but it's a special. But that would be a special. <laughs> Can't make that every day. Right. Right. Can I say my other one? So we yes, see please. I just, we got, off on the, we got off on the on the dumpling thing. So I love, I love a good chicken. part of Nick Bone. What's a pot of neck bone? What's that? Neck bone. She said a pot of neck bone. Oh, a but down pot. Home, but down home is just one word. A pot of neck bone. Oh, I never heard that. <laughs> a pot of neck bone. A pot of neck bone. Yeah, one word. One, one word. word. <laughs> pot of neck bone. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Tara, say that again. Right. Say that again. Pot of neck bone. Okay. It's almost an R in the in the in the, in the, in the potter. <laughs> I'm like, what is that? I'm finished. <laughs> Done. Now, what is that? What does that taste like? Oh my god, it's so good. Um, <laughs> I love that she goes. It's it's oh bony meat. Uh, is it like chicken wings? No, I don't know what it's like. Is it beef or is it pork? It's beef. Oh, it is. Um, it, it is. It's actually the neck bone, and then oh, nice. in, in, in the joints of the neck bones is where all of the second meat is. Mexican, we know neck bones. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I love yeah, it. Look at the like, Mexicans are jumping in there. It's good. Very And it's one of those dishes that you have to eat with your hands. Yeah. I love that. I don't mind. I don't mind. Give me some napkins. I'll eat all that stuff. Out of the bone. Suck it out. Oh my God. Ooh. Terry Liebert Ross has joined us. Hi, Terry Ross. How are you, my love? I saw. It. We're talking food. Terry, <clears throat> you would love Randy. When Terry comes back hey, and Terry. Steve. They have to go to a uh, spoon fed on a Friday night or any night. Just go any night. We'll we'll, we'll meet you down there. All right. So now, Randy, I I know that you are a chef, but what was your favorite? Now I, you talked about some Oreos. Yes. All right. Yes. Tell tell everybody what you do every night. Because if if I did this, not every night, even every two weeks, I'd be gigantic. Mm. I'm a, what? But I've you doing, little skinny malinkas, they would I've say been, the I've Irish. I've been doing thing. this since I was a. Uh, a young, a young man. Okay. And what do you do every night to wind down? I have a full pack of golden Oreo cookies, all three rolls that I have to dunk in milk. Every, the whole bag? You the eat whole the whole thing? Every single night. Um, Can you believe that? My best presents from my husband and from my kids and from my grandkids have been opening up a box and there's dozens and dozens of Oreo cookie packages. Oh, my God. Now, uh, this is going in a completely different direction, mm-hmm. but I don't want to uh, not talk about it because I forgot. Uh, another thing that I want you guys to know is Randy, uh, was you in the Air Force? I was. I was in the military from, oh. right out of high school. Okay, so we love our vets, and uh, so we thank you for your service, sir. Thank you. And um, so, Randy, do you cook when, uh, in the in the Air Force? I Were did. You? Okay. I, I was so excited when, when, when I went into the military and I was – very excited when I got my first apartment. I was stationed in Denver, Colorado, and I was stationed in Korea and Texas and Maine. And I couldn't wait to make my first dish in the kitchen. And I called my grandmother, I called my mom, my dad's mom. Because you had your own place. Exactly. So you were stationed in what did you do in the Air Force? I, I, I was military police. Wow. That's sexy. Isn't that oh, sexy? Right? Tara's beautiful. making all the sounds. <laughs> no matter what, Sarah, you are like, you got all the sounds. So I was like, Rita's in the public with her husband. She's like, mm-hmm. And then, <laughs> she's just, she is there for some. So, so when, I, when I went into I the military, it, I, I only weighed 130, 135. I used to compete. I think I weighed that in sixth grade. That's all I'm going to say. I used to compete in, in martial arts, but that was my fighting weight. And I couldn't gain weight. So so the guys in the military, my, my, my co-workers, the other soldier said, start working out. And when I started working out, my appetite increased as of well. Of course. So I would start calling my grandmother and my mom to um, hone in my skills as to the dishes that were my favorites that they made. And they told you the recipes Absolutely. over the phone, right? Yeah. So, um, and you, did you? And when you made them, did you? Of course, you you did it make you miss them more? Or did you? Did it make you feel closer to them? It made me feel closer to them because yeah. I shared them. Everything about a southern meal is not so much eating alone as much as it is doing a supper style. Absolutely. And, and, and you, and you, 
I will invite strangers to this day. Are you hungry? You know, I'm the same way. Randy, yeah. we are kindred spirits. Yes, absolutely. That's When's your birthday? January, January 6th. Okay, so you are Capricorn. Capricorn. And how about you, Tara? November 7th. So you're a Scorpio? Ooh. Oh, that's all those sounds. Yeah. Billy is a yeah, Scorpio, baby. too. So we that's have two right. Scorpios. <laughs> that's right. Oh, my God. Leo, you're a Sag, hey. right? Hey. That's why he's so lovable. Oh my God, the Scorpios, they are, that's SCX on a stick. Yeah. You know that, right, mm -hmm. man? Mm -hmm. And all right, so you, <laughs> that's a, I'm I'm a lot of fun. Though. I heard. I mean, I did make all the sounds back there. I'm like, she must know something. I don't know. <laughs> tell her. But you could know. That's, you know what? You I probably know. better not know. I'm going to tell you, I get in enough trouble as it is in my life. All right, so Randy, you, you started cooking your, your mom and your grandma's recipes, and mm -hmm. that's when you started cooking, right? Yes, I was a big grandma's boy growing up. So I was. I love I, grandma's I was, I was, boys. Oh my gosh, I was, I was. Those are the best. I, I couldn't stand being a few feet away from my dad's mom. Couldn't stand it. Couldn't did she raise you? Did you? Yeah, she did. My mother always lived in Connecticut. Okay. So I would come up during the summer to visit my mom. Okay. And, and rush back home to my, my grandmother. And my dad. But Is she it's all still alive? Grandma. No, she passed in, in mid eighties. Okay. Yeah, and that's what's so wonderful what about was her the name? restaurant, Viola. Viola, thank yeah. you, Viola. Thank you, Viola. Up there, we know you can hear and us. Everyone either called her Miss Vi, and we didn't put the S in cousin. It was Cun. Yeah, Cun. So right, Why? so Cun Vi. <laughs> really? So I love one, that. They either say. I'm learning so, so many so things. They, so they'll say, "Hey, Miss Vi," or "Hey, Cun Vi." I love that. And, and sitting that's right sexy. next to her. Will always be me, and that's how I didn't even. I wasn't even as a little kid, you so were I wasn't always... learning to cook, I was under her while she was cooking. Well, that and that's why it was a natural inclination. Or Randy, natural I'm telling you, you and I, this is just the beginning of a great friendship because we could talk for hours. That's exactly hours. how I learned to cook. I, I was crazy about my mother, she was my favorite, she still is my favorite mm. person, and I just loved sitting next to her or watching her cook. Yeah. So she would cook, and my mom was handicapped, so she had to sit when she cooked. She sat on a, a stool because she couldn't really stand up. And I would just stand with her and lean and just watch her and say, what are you doing? What's that? Yeah. And she'd say, oh, this, or I don't know. My mother would make up as she went, or she'd say, I'm going to do that now. What do you think? Should I do? I'd be like, yeah, you're going to put that in? Or my mother was very good about looking at it, and probably your grandma was the same way, seeing what was already in the cat cupboard and seeing what was already, because we, we grew up poor. I'm sure, sure you did too. And didn't know it. Do you didn't? You didn't know it. What I do I always at, say? I look back at these dishes. Anybody that knows me says, I always say the same thing. We had no idea we were poor yeah. because our, we always ate delicious food, but it was peasant style Absolutely. food. Absolutely. Chicken, not chicken, Um, biscuits and syrup with fat back was my favorite meal. I'll and I look back on it now. I'll, I'll look at syrup. Uh, and, and I look back on it now. It's probably because that was what was available and quick. You had right. flour, right? You make biscuits, yep. And you had syrup, right? And there was always a little thing of fat back. Mm. Yep, and that's right. with Italians is polenta, no, that's my which is no. cornmeal. Uh, you like polenta, but you know now everybody's like, oh, polenta. I'll tell you what polenta was. If you didn't have a lot of money, which most of us didn't, but like again, we didn't know we were poor. Our moms would make literally a gigantic pot like this big. And we would we have the big thing to stir it, and so she would call us in. She'd be like, Maria Pia, that's my real name. She'd call me Maria Pia, vieni qua, and then I would have to do it. And then she'd call my little sister Carla Nia, vieni qua, and then she would have to do it. And we then my my mom would come back in and she'd do it for a while. My grandma because it was you had to keep stirring that cornmeal, and what it was at the end of it, then you just dumped it out into these big bowls, and if you let it get a, a certain a temperature then you could cut like if it got cold enough you could cut it and make it into like squares it. or we liked it really warm and she would pour mm -hmm. it just like tomato sauce that, that process you just described i call that cooking with love yeah mm -hmm. cooking with love when folks say they can taste love in your food it's because you you took that time to stir it there's, okay there's, there's no fast process i know no there's no there's no but it's part process. of what makes you love it absolutely my mother also used to take apples and put them in aluminum foil, put sugar on them, cut up apples, and just put them in the, the stove. And that was like, just asked me about that. Um, we thought it was the greatest thing in the world. Yeah, it, it was, was, it, was she, it was though. She seven. took an apple, cut it up, put some sugar, throw, right. and we were like, whoa, yeah. think about that, how cool that is. So we are, believe it or not, we're, we're coming close to the end of our show. So uh, Tara, Tell us again where you're going to be so we know. I will be in Jacksonville, Florida at the Alhambra Theater in 
dining. Okay. Uh, May 8th through June 9th doing Ain't Misbehaving. I'll okay. be there as now. Okay. So if you're down, oh my God, if you're down in Jacksonville doing that, just in that theater, you're not going to be touring around with that, no, right? No, just in that theater. And okay. It's alhambrajacks.com. Okay. Um, so listen, now when the show is over, we're going to eat, of course, but then tomorrow, the next day, whenever you get home, you can type that in. Do you see this feed? Yeah. Tara, you can type that in so they can find it. But on your uh, website, they can find all that information, right? Yes, it will be there. I haven't updated it, but I will as of tonight. Okay. Good. <laughs> you see how these things happen? So Tara <laughs> Connor Jones, um, I think pretty soon we're going to come to, we've got about two minutes left. Um, Randy... Now, I want you, I know you're, uh, Yvette has joined, Yvette Bloom has joined us. Just want, Lynn Portis has joined us, Cooking with Love. Lynn, oh my God, you got to go back and watch the show. We got to go see Randy. Uh, Scorpio, so the Lynn is a Scorpio too, she's my musical director. So Randy, now, hey Jimmy, how much time do we have? About a minute and a half. Okay, Randy, uh, what do you want to leave people with about, uh, do you want to leave people what would you say in your life has brought you the most the most satisfaction and you want to pass that on? What is it? Mm. Don't be afraid to change your mind. Don't be afraid to change your mind. Wow. That's yeah. okay. And also from what I got from your story is don't be afraid because there's something that will take you up in its wings. Like there were so many times, I never heard you say you were giving up. I heard you say that we're not going to open. It's not, we tried, but then this, this Absolutely. cloud of love came and lifted you up. And also what I got from your story <clears throat> is let people carry you because you've carried them. And sometimes we have to carry each other. Learn to say yes. Learn to say yes. Yeah. And, um, Tara, you, I love what you said about the light going off and the light going on. Um, what else do you want to leave? Oh, how many seconds, Jimmy? Sometimes I talk. Okay, we got to wrap it up. We love and appreciate you. We could talk for hours. We're going to talk after this. We're going to enjoy a delicious meal. Thank you, Jimmy. Bell, we appreciate you so much. Thank you, Armed Radio. Come back every Tuesday at 9. Love you. Love so you. Fun.